19, Minnesota by one. Walter Bond on the drive will leave it for coffee. That doesn't go, and back comes Syracuse. Syracuse has got to start posting up. If they catch Minnesota in the man-to-man, -man, they've got a height advantage. They've got to take, take that advantage. There's a steal by Newburn and a foot race, and he wins it, but blew the shot. And Willie Burton fouls on the attempted rebound. There's a case of hearing footsteps behind you, Quinn. Well, it was a combination of hand footsteps. The defensive effort was good. Melvin Newburn shaking his head. But Derek Coleman just didn't see from the backside Melvin Newburn comes. Now, what it looks like to me, he doesn't have his mind made up as to what he wants to do. He thinks he wants to dunk it, and then he just loses it off his fingertip. There's no question about the foul on Willie Burton. But that indecision caused him to miss that shot. Because if you hear Derek Coleman, I guess you would say something about foot, footsteps. But I'd dunk it if I could. Team fouls on each side now. Owens moving, got the pass, and gets the bucket. That's 10 for Owens. And Syracuse back on top by one. Lynch for coffee. Back rim, no. Coleman has it, and up ahead for Johnson. Too far. Well, that one goes too far, but that's not the last time we're going to see a fast break. And the reason that I say that is, as I look, there was nobody back defensively for Minnesota, so it looked, they're sending the guards to the offensive board. They're not getting back to protect their basket. Coming up here on CBS later tonight, here from New Orleans, Georgia Tech, Michigan State. Ball State will be taking on Nevada, Las Vegas from Oakland, California in the West Regional. Shipping Jansky, shot off, it doesn't fall. Coleman with another rebound. Johnson will push it. Ellis had the open shot, didn't take it. Thompson trying to get inside, batted back out, and here come the Gophers. This is a four on two, and Newburn will keep it. See, that's the kind of thing he's capable of doing, Greg. Just like he threw the pass out of bounds, he can go one on four like he should and still make something good happen. Coleman, three-pointer on the way. And the whistle blows. He called it across the top. It hit the, yeah, hit the top of the backboard. That's a good call. So, therefore, it's Jimmy Beheim's team loses it out of bounds. Into the game for Minnesota is big number 55, Bob Martin, a seven-foot sophomore from Apple Valley, Minnesota. Bob Martin has been a, a bit of a project for him. Uh, I, when I talked to Clem about him, he really thought he'd be a good player, but they, they haven't seen the kind of improvement they wanted to see this year. Well, he's going to post up LeRon Ellis right away. See what he does with it. Fake one. That's not a bad move. I'd say it's a project that's come along quite well. Even that. <laughs> Three-point Minnesota lead. Seven minutes, 50 seconds to play first half. And Coleman trying to do the same for coffee. Ellis is open. Yeah, he's got to shoot that shot because the defense are back off keeping Derek Coleman from getting the ball. Ellis and all the Syracuse, if they get that one at the corner, they got to shoot it. Walter Bond regained the handle. And Coleman with a good defensive play and took it away. Thompson. Owens. Scott. Tapped home by Thompson. Great. One of the things that happens when you get in the open court game, these gangly bodies like Stevie Thompson can get offensive rebounds, and the turnovers are the things that are really kill Minnesota because nobody's prepared to get back and therefore not block out on the other end. Lynch to the baseline, that's a good shot. Yeah, I'm telling you, Lynch is a good player. He's a, he's a surprising player. He can shoot the three-pointer as well. Under seven minutes for the half. Holden, baseline. Doesn't go. Coleman follows, lost it. Saved by Coffee, and back come the Gophers. Lynch pulls it up. And now Bond out to Newburn. That one's way short. They got partially blocked. Billy Owens got a hand on it. Owens, good look for Thompson. Syracuse by one, 27-26, and putting on a passing display so far. Well, they're at their tempo, too, Greg. This is the way they want it. If they can play all 10 or 12 minutes on the defensive end and then run it back on the offensive end, that's what they'd rather do. Lynch on the run. Good call for him. And Ellis got a finger in the eye, it looks like. While Leron Ellis takes a moment we will too 604 to play first half we'll be back 
Did you know the cost of two business calls from these Chicago art galleries to Minneapolis at 3 p.m. may surprise you? Great, Steve. It's one of a kind. With AT&T Pro Watts, for this three-minute business call, you can get AT&T quality for prices that are extremely competitive. Even though the other company would like you to believe, they always save you lots of money. That's my big saving? That's it. Big deal. Value. Another AT&T advantage. <clears throat> Those tough Mazda trucks, the most trouble-free in America, backed by the best basic truck warranty, bar none. <clears throat> get yours now, and you'll also get up to $1,000 cash back from Mazda. The Mazda Spring Sales Event. It's not subtle. But it's catchy. At your local Mazda dealers, now. Gillette announces a razor that can sense the individual needs of your face. Introducing the extraordinary Gillette Sensor Shaving System. Sensor blades are mounted on responsive springs to continuously sense and adjust to your face for the best shave a man can get. Closer, smoother, safer. New Gillette Sensor. They're every girl's dream and every man's fantasy. Your temptation. A world premiere movie, The Laker Girls, coming Tuesday, April 3rd. Welcome back to a facility only slightly larger than Quinn Buckner's dream house, the Louisiana Superdome. <laughs> oh, Greg Noble along with Quinn Buckner. One point lead for the Orange with 6.04 to play in the first half. And if you're wondering what happened to LeRon Ellis just as we took a break, here's what happened. Well, as uh, Kevin Lynch takes the shot in the left side of your screen, you'll see LeRon Ellis go up. But right in the middle, Richard Coffey swipes up at the ball and just looks like he grazes LeRon Ellis in the eye. They've taken a look at him, but he seems to be all right. They set him down. You know, he, he just needs to to tell you that he's all right. Basically, that happens to you. You're, you're scared because the one thing you, is you really don't want to have happen to you get stuck in the eye. Loyola Marymount jumping off to the lead over Alabama and Robert Ori out of the game for Alabama is a big blow to the Crimson Tide. Well, it really is because Robert Ori is their jump shooter. He can stick it with range and he's been playing well in the tournament. We'll keep you updated on the progress of that one as we progress to this one. Scott shot from outside. No. Owens on the follow. Doesn't go. Loose ball, it'll come back out to the orange men. Greg, Minnesota's making a, a, a fundamental mistake. They're trying to jump with Syracuse instead of blocking out first and then going after the ball. If you just jump, Syracuse will out jump. Inside, four men around Colvin, and he's fouled by number 15, Connell Lewis. Oh, boy, they had him well surrounded, and Connell Lewis, all he had to do was get his body in position. Instead, he reached in there with his hand, and Fisher caught it. They had three men around there, Colby. He, he wasn't going to get up a good shot. Syracuse's all-time leader in scoring and rebounding. You know, he's, he's played so much more uh, focused with so much more direction this year than he had in the past. And it's good to see a young man get himself together and play the way that Derek Coleman has this year. He missed those two. Syracuse is now 0 for 5 from the free throw line. Amazing because the Orange men have been hitting 80% of their free throws in the tournament so far. Could it be the facility? <laughs> Derek was down there before it <laughs> and didn't quite get it done. Well, I wouldn't be the first to complain about the problems of shooting here in the Superdome. You know, it, it's a, it is a problem when you have a backdrop like you do here, Greg. I'm not a shooter, so I wouldn't have as much problem. But it is. But the perception is bad. Big Bob Martin doing a job on the offensive board. Missed the first shot. Stole it and scored. He's got four. Minnesota has a one-point lead. We have 455 to play for the half. They're in a two-three zone. It's, it's, it'll be an active zone. Force a jump shot. Travel, travel. You're right. You know, and I was about to say the one thing that you don't want to happen in the zone is allow Stevie Thompson or anybody else to get that close. I mean, before he traveled, he had a 12-foot shot. Nine turnovers for the Orange men to five for Minnesota. Newburn will take it from that side. First rim, no, and hustling after it was Newburn, but he tapped it out of bounds. 
I've, I've said this repeatedly, not today. The toughest shot to for a team offensive rebound is when somebody, the point guard particularly, like Newburn, takes the shot that quickly. Nobody's moving, can't get offensive rebound. Minnesota making Syracuse, moving around the outside. Johnson looking for a way, takes it from the free throw line and rebounded by Martin. He lost it, he was fouled. Well, they really get some production out of Martin. When you can come off the bench and get a, a guy to give you a couple of rebounds and, and points the way he's doing, you've got to be pleased with that. Bob Martin has four points. That's already double his scoring average. And we'll go down to the other end to shoot. Foul is on Dave Johnson, number four. You know, ha having watched Clem Haskins' team for the past two years, you can just you can see the maturity, and you can see a lot of Clem in them. They they play hard uh, with great discipline, and you, and you can see the personality of Clem Haskins in his ball club. One time, third round draft choice overall in the NBA, had a fine nine-year career. And Bob Martin, a 52% free throw shooter, just nailed his first one. <laughs> yeah, you consider that a good good day when you get Bob Martin to make one of them. <laughs> he has five points. He has six. And Minnesota has a three-point lead as we approach four minutes to play in the first half. Game two to come tonight, Georgia Tech against Michigan State. You know, the thing that's, that has hurt Syracuse to a degree is Michael Edwards is too small to play. And because of that, they don't really have anybody that has a point guard mentality out of, on the court for Syracuse. Coffee pulls down rebound number six. Burks for room on the baseline. Good find for Martin. Great find. That was a wraparound pass after getting caught by two people, but you see Martin is making a big contribution. Eight points for Bob Martin. It's a five-point lead for Minnesota. Now let's see how patient Syracuse is on their end. This is when their age and experience needs to show. They need to be patient. Owens, three-pointer. Billy Owens from long range. He has 13 points and cuts the Minnesota lead to two. He's been in the shooting slump, Greg, and, and the thing that I thought needed to happen for him is to make a couple layups. He's done that early. Now he's made his jump shot. That was what really makes him a difficult player. Inside, he is blocked, and here comes the orange, four on two. Good pass for Scott. Follow no good. Johnson is there. Do they two or three chances after the ball. I mean, they've got guys that can just jet down the court and leap as well. We're tied at 32 as we approach two and a half minutes to play in the first half. Got David Johnson on Willie Burton. Burton's been, been kind of quiet here lately. Yes, he has. Link inside, high off the glass, doesn't go. And Coffee grabs the rebound. Here's Mario Green inside. That's a tough shot. At home by Coffee. Always around the ball. Great nose for the ball is Richard Coffee. Got him on offensive rebound basket. That's 10 points, 8 rebounds for Richard Coffey. Two minutes to play now. Minnesota by two. Scott, three points. Got it. Ray, he, can stick it. he gets on a roll. He's the one that's been shooting the three-pointers for the Orange. They'd like to see the fact that he's starting to warm up a little bit. Syracuse by one, 35-34. Pressure on the ball and a foul on Dave Johnson. Jim Beheim standing there wondering where the foul was. Well, there was a lot of action there, and I'm sure Jimmy would probably agree if he had our vantage point. But the thing that's starting to happen to Minnesota with Mario Green, he's not moving the ball and distributing it that well. And one of the things that I would, from Slim Haskins, I consider getting him out of the game so I can have the ball move around a little bit. Well, the cheer is for Bob Martin, who goes to the bench, having done a sterling job for the Golden Gophers. Eight points and a couple of big rebounds as well. Yeah, and, and credit should go to him because he played well. And, and as we were speaking, Canel Lewis came in for Mario Green because Mario is not moving the ball, and Minnesota was lucky to come up here with two foul shots. I know Willie Bird's a good foul shooter. That's why I gave you two. <laughs> <laughs> this is a young man that walked.
walked up to me and said, I remember you when I was little. You know, that, that makes you feel old. <laughs> I remember you when I was little. Thank you very much. <laughs> Minute and a half to play. We're tied at 35. There's a whistle down low, and that'll be on Kevin Lynch. Lynch with his first. Both teams in the bonus, and Tony Scott will go to the line. I'd have to say with a minute and a half to go here for Minnesota, they've got to score about where they wanted. They wanted to keep it probably in, in the high 60s, maybe mid 70s. And I would think Syracuse, Syracuse wants to win, obviously, but they would rather have the score a little bit higher so they can take care, take advantage of their ability to run up and down the court. There's the first good shot from the free throw line for the Orange tonight. They are now one out of six. Tony Scott, a 65% free throw shooter, hits them both and gives Syracuse a two-point lead with a minute 26 to play in the first half. We'll be right back. Brooks is warming up for a big save opportunity on that Tercel here at Toyota's big league sales event. And there's been so much action, they're sending in relief salespeople. Luciano calls time. This new Toyota Previ has one can't-miss rookie. There's more room in there than in your trophy case, Joe. Well, there's more on it than one of your throws at second base, too. Uh, back to the action. Looks like Brooks is going to get that save. Catch the excitement while lots of great seats are available at Toyota's big league sales event. It's the only game in town. A trophy case. <laughs> Pizza Hut presents the three-point play. Right now, put up $8.99 and pick either one, a meat lover's pizza, two, a cheese lover's plus pizza, or three, a pepperoni lover's pizza. Or for just $12.99, pick any two of the three. So go for the three-point play. That's one for $8.99 or any two of the three for $12.99. Now that's one deal you don't want to miss. Pizza Hut, making it great. This is the shop of Samsat Pazar, a thriving establishment on the outskirts of Bangkok. Unlike other international executives, he has no phone system, no computers, not even a fax machine. He does, however, enjoy one modern and efficient service nearly four billion people in 175 countries today can take for granted. UPS. We run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Well, you know, the Golden Gophers and their followers are equally proud of their school. 42,000 strong at the University of Minnesota, which proudly points to Hubert Humphrey, among other alumni. And medical research, one of the prominent studies there. 37-35 the score with a minute 26 to play first half. Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner keeping you updated on what's happening in Oakland, California. Loyola Marymount leading Alabama 9-6 with 11.47 to play. Boy, now 11 to 6, but 11 points in about 8 minutes of play for Loyola Marymount. Wimp Sanderson taking the air out of the ball. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. I said to you, you know, we had this conversation, and I thought that Alabama's disciplined enough to, to hold the ball. They won't force the action, and you see the effect it's having on Loyola. We are told, incidentally, Alabama's fine jump shooter, Robert Ori, injured early on, and that game is now back in the lineup. So we'll keep you advised as we go along. Meanwhile, we're below one minute to play. Coming out of the timeout, Syracuse went into his zone, forced a jump shot. Shot clock down to 10, up no good from Bond, rebounded by Billy Owens, who has had a fine first half. Syracuse and Beheim wants him to spread it out. Yeah, it's a good choice. Spread it out here, he's been able to get back in the league. His club really hadn't played that well, but in the NCAA tournament, you've got to be able to play your tempo and sometimes play the other team, and I think that's what Syracuse has been able to do here. No shot clock, game clock to 20. They got a couple mismatches they can go to. This is one of them, Billy Owens with the basketball, but you can always get Derek Coleman with the ball, but he's got a mismatch too. Owens almost lost the handle, out of bounds, belongs to Syracuse with four seconds to play. Stay tuned, coming up at halftime, the road to the final four, Jim Nance, Mike Francesa, bringing you up to date on Everything that's happening in tonight's semifinal action from our studios in New York. Oh, oh. For Owens, who got it? Not a bad way 
for Syracuse to go to the locker room. Billy Owens scoring his 14th and 15th points. This is a pretty good play for a down to the buzzer. When, well, it is a good play, but you see the height advantage, and you look that Walter Bond is trying to front Billy Owens and got no help on the backside. Billy Owens strong enough and quick enough to get it up before the clock expires. You just saw Clem Haskins' reaction on the far side. Take a look at Jim Beheim. Yeah, he'll take that as he goes to the locker room. It's the end of the first half with the score, Syracuse 39, Minnesota 35, and CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Semifinal Game from New Orleans, Louisiana is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Pizza Hut, an official NCAA corporate sponsor, Pizza Hut, making it great. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, remember no when to say when. There are a hundred reasons to own a Mercedes-Benz. For John and me, it keeps coming down to just two. To protect the lives of firefighters, DuPont developed a remarkable fire-resistant fiber for their clothing called Nomex. But perhaps even more remarkable is how it protects those who never even wear it. At DuPont, we make the things that make a difference. Did you know, not all business calls from banks in Boston to San Francisco at 2 p.m. cost the same. Nobody beats our interest rate. With AT&T Pro Watts, for this three-and-a-half-minute business call, you can get AT&T quality for prices that are extremely competitive. Even though the other company would like you to believe, they always save you lots of money. Where's my big savings? Don't ask me. Value. Another AT&T advantage. Based on a true story. Neighbor turned against neighbor. Family against family. White against black. From the Pulitzer Prize winning book. Common Ground. Sunday. It happened. It really happened. This is CBS. For great personal service and low everyday prices, check the lineup at your neighborhood True Value Hardware Store, where the March Hardware Value of the Month is the two-gallon pail of True Test High Hiding White Flat Latex Wall Paint. It dries quickly to a soft, velvety finish, and tools clean up with soap and water. In March, the two-gallon pail of True Test Flat Latex Wall Paint is just $8.98, where you see the banner at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. If your car pulls to one side, if your steering wheel is off-center, your car could be out of alignment. At Midas, train professionals with the latest technology align your car right. Midas realigns foreign cars and light trucks too, the right way. Before your tires show uneven wear, have your alignment checked, or you could be shortening tire life and taking risks. You see, we're serious about safety. Hey, 